Spider-Man 2 for the PSP is a 3D action game that lets you slip into the tights of Spidey himself and punch, kick, and web swing your way through about 20 levels. It's based on the same gameplay found in 2002's Spider-Man the Movie Game, as well as last year's Spider-Man 2 console titles, though it's got original content of its own. The game includes a few choice boss battles, leading up to a final battle with Dr. Octopus, and loosely touches on the main plot points of the blockbuster action movie that inspired it. As Spider-Man, you've got access to a nice variety of different moves and combos, and the game does capture that sense of Spider-Man having superhuman powers and agility. It looks great in motion. The game's controls took some getting used to, especially since this was the first PSP game in which I was forced to actually use a little thumbstick to control my character. That stick doesn't feel terribly responsive straight away, but I got used to it soon enough. Some other control quirks, like having to rotate the camera angle with the D-pad, occasionally felt awkward, but overall the game controls fine. It's also quite fun, especially since there's really not much repetition from level to level. You'll go from high-flying outdoor stages into indoor hostage rescues and stuff like that. Problem is, the game's awfully short. It's not exactly easy, but all the levels are only a few minutes long, so even counting retries, it only took me a few hours to get to the end. This is a full-priced product, so while I'm glad I got a chance to play it, I don't think it's a good deal for $50. Unlike its console counterparts, Spider-Man 2 is a linear action game, so it doesn't have the GTA-style free-roaming environments in it. Still, some of the outdoor levels look and feel very big, and let you quickly web-swing around chasing bad guys. Combat is actually really simple, though you've got some different combos to try out if you want to. Between levels, you get loading times that are a little too lengthy for comfort, and you also earn points with which you can upgrade Spider-Man's abilities, but since the game's so short, these upgrades feel kind of shallow. So yeah, the game's basically fun while it lasts, and it's got some great-looking visuals that help show off what the PSP is capable of, but there's not much substance to last you for the long haul here. Just a handful of unlockable extras like production artwork, and you've got several different difficulty levels as well. The boss fights were the highlight of the experience for me. You don't just fight Doc Ock, but you also get to face Mysterio, Vulture, Rhino, and Shocker. Each boss fight is distinct and fairly tricky to figure out, though pretty easy once you do. Also, the game features voice work from some of the movie's stars, including Tobey Maguire, Kirsten Dunst, and Alfred Molina, which is a nice touch. The ticket! Whew! Man, if I'd forgotten that, I would've missed MJ's play tonight. As a PSP launch title, Spider-Man 2 benefits from not having too much in the way of direct competition. Then again, the PSP is launching with more games than pretty much any other video game system to date. So Spider-Man 2 probably isn't going to be the best bang for your buck among the PSP's lineup, although hardcore fans of the character could justify getting it for other reasons. Spider-Man 2 would have been a totally solid game if it had about twice as many levels or so. It's still okay, since the core mechanics are good and the gameplay is fun. So, it's a decent choice if you're a fan of the character and don't want to or don't intend to play your PSP for long stretches at a time. The bite-sized levels are totally fine for small doses of action.